Welcome to Rebuilding a Vintage Open Steam Launch, Part 39, Fitting the Radio Control System. It's been a while since the last episode, mainly because the boat has been upside down on the bench, waiting for the paint to dry. And now the paint's dried, I can paint some of the parts that I couldn't get to when the boat was upside down, like the one in the clip currently running. I showed the radio control system that I'm going to use in this boat in a previous episode when I was testing it on the kitchen table. Now it's time to fit everything into the boat and see what happens. This is a six channel transmitter but I'm only going to be using four of the channels. And here are the components that are going into the boat. Well apart from the dry battery box and I'm going to use a new switch. The first thing to do is to just plug the receiver in and connect up all the servos and the battery. I know that the system works but I haven't tried these servos in the boat. And here we go, yes one of them is definitely the wrong way around. But that's an easy fix, I just removed the arm and fitted it back on the servo in a different position. This is the emergency gas shutoff valve, so it's time to test it. I've definitely got the throw of the servo correct relative to the valve. This clip shows me using my igniter to light the gas. So all I had to do was throw the switch on the transmitter, the gas valve opened, the gas came out of the burner, which was immediately lit by the sparks on the electric igniter and by moving the switch in the opposite direction, the valve shuts off the gas. So I can safely assume that this part of the circuit works fine. Over now to the rudder. It was difficult with the rudder in this boat because of the layout of the boat and the fact that it was a pond launch and was never designed for radio control. As you can see, the arm's in the correct position and it's more or less working fine. I've slowed the video by half so you can see and hear how this servo works. It's not labouring at all, it's extremely powerful. This part of the job took a lot longer than I'm showing in the video. I had to shorten the arm and enlarge the hole in the arm and this was to make sure that there was absolutely no tightness in the linkage. Mounting the servo on rubber grommets apart from vibration prevention is a good idea. It allows a little bit of free movement. And with the flexibility of movement on the servo mount coupled with a slightly larger hole in the servo arm and the fact that it's in the correct position with the correct throw means the servo will not stall and therefore will not consume too much current from the battery. And the next job is to make the regulator work. And the very first thing that I did was to enlarge all of the holes in the servo arm. Again, this is to prevent any friction between the push rod and the servo arm itself. I found that the second hole on the servo arm was perfect to allow the correct travel of the push rod to operate the regulator correctly. And as it turns out, I already had an arm cut down to this length, so I used that. As you can see here, the servo travel is not excessive, and when you look at the other end of the push rod, the travel of the arm on the regulator is just about right. And now, with all the servos in position, it's time to examine the current drain. And it is fairly excessive. When these servos start, the volt watch flashes down to low. But this is only happening when the servo starts and reverses direction and it soon recovers, it goes straight back to perfect, so that will be okay. Although I'm not convinced it would work very well on dry cells, so this boat's definitely going to have to have a rechargeable battery. The receiver will be fitted under the top decking using some Velcro. To test the functionality of the regulator, I connected the regulator's outlet to the engine's steam inlet. After this, I connected a compressed air pipe to the inlet of the regulator. And once I opened the valve on the compressor to let the air in and gave the engine a quick push because this of course is a compound and isn't self-starting, it ran perfectly. As the engine hasn't been run for quite a while, I thought I'd give it a bit of a treat and oil some of the moving parts. It's probably a good idea to stop the engine, but it's the only excitement that I get these days. So I'm just about ready now to test the regulator. I move the radio control stick and the regulator moves and the engine slows down and I move the regulator the other way by moving the stick the other way and the engine speeds up and the throttle response is quite good. From a sailing point of view though, as this is a compound engine, I do not want it to stop other than in an emergency of course. So probably I will use the trims on the transmitter to make sure that the regulator cannot be fully closed by accident. The general plan is to sail both this boat and the previous boat that I worked on on the same day and on the same lake. And it's at a boating club so there's a dinghy available for rescuing them if anything goes wrong. But I do need to finish this second boat first. What I need to do is make a mounting 
for the battery and the radio receiver, and the assembly needs to fit under the top decking at the left hand side, or the port side should I say. For making this thing that looks a little bit like a shaped parcel shelf, I'm using some bits of mahogany that I have, and I'm making sure that everything is going to fit on it. This of course is upside down. I'll show you in a moment how it's going to fit in the boat. So this looks okay. I'll be using Velcro to hold all the components in place. And this clip shows me putting the second shelf in, because even though the battery is going to be held to the boat with some Velcro, it needs to sit on something so it can't shake loose. So all this is, is just a bit of simple wood bashing. I'm checking the dimensions between the top shelf and the bottom shelf. I'm using cyanoacrylate adhesive to hold it all together, and it's temporarily been held together by some spring clamps, as you can see. The corners are going to be reinforced, and when it's all painted and attached to the boat, it will look like it's always been there. Generally speaking, I make a lot of things up as I go along, including this narrative. I never use a script, it would take far too long to type it all out. But in this case, I'd already thought it out. If I'm sat about, not doing anything much, I'll think, hmm, I wonder how I'm going to mount this and that in the boat. And I get a lot of ideas that way. This clip is titled, Watching the Glue Dry. And once the glue had finally dried, I used my belt sander to sand the assembly to the finished size to fit in the boat. This clip shows the general arrangement. The unit fits underneath the top decking, and it has to clear the superstructure that fits into this section of the boat. And the good thing about doing it this way is that the superstructure will also hold the battery and the receiver in place should they come loose from the Velcro. Once this assembly is glued in place using epoxy resin, it will be very solid. And then once it's painted black, like the rest of the inside of the hull, everything will look good. Just a final note about the paintwork. I ended up using the Humbrol Ivory paint because I thought it was a really good match for the original colour. I could of course have masked up the entire hull and painted it by spraying it, and it would have looked really beautiful, but then it would not have the essence of the vintage boat that this is. At the end of the day, it's supposed to look a little bit like an African Queen, but the African Queen boat was a lot rougher than this one. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.